He just signed a record contract. But now, local rap star is gunned down in Englewood. The singer known as Blood Money was one of nine people shot during a night across the city. This morning, police are still looking for the suspect who opened fire on Mario Hess, also known in the hip hop community as Blood Money. My relatives say Mario Hess was standing outside of his aunt's home on the 5600 block of South Elizabeth when a man approached and opened fire, hitting Hess at least 10 times. Now this is him, a 30 year old father of five. He was really shot in the chest last night outside of his family's Englewood home. With him was his 28 year old cousin Darnell Patton. He was shot in the abdomen and underwent surgery. Hess was there visiting his family. Friends and family say he just returned from Los Angeles where he signed a contract with Interscope Records. He made it. He yeah. made it and they was mad. He had a lot of people just jealous of him and it's sad, you know. You no, know, he came from nothing to that. Look at him. He didn't deserve that though at all. March 2014 was a milestone month in the life of Chicago native Mario Hess, also known as Chief Keef's older cousin and enforcer, Big Glow, also known as Blood Money. Well, you know, when it comes to this rap game, I'm the enforcer, period, but yeah, I'm Chief Keef enforcer. I'm just, yeah, I am. Brought up in the gang culture of Chicago without a father and mother, he was raised in a lifestyle of vice crime, money, and guns. I ain't come up like everybody else came up. I ain't come up with a mother and father like everybody else came. I came up with the streets, guns, and money. This affected his days as a youth in an enormous way. While children were pursuing an education to achieve their dreams, Blood Money was spending most of his adolescent years behind bars for various criminal activities. What I did when I was 11, it caught up. I'd rather not speak on it. It was something, it was, it was bogus, but you know. But I got caught with, I was fighting that case up until like I was like 14, then I went to jail. The judge sentenced me to originally four months. I ain't come home for like 46 months. But in late March 2014, all that was about to change for the better. Or at least, so it seemed. In an attempt to divert from the lifestyle he once lived, he instead decided to pursue a less dangerous path in the music industry. His efforts proved fruitful under his cousin Chief Keefe's label. And I'm the first artist signed to, to, uh, to Glory Boy, Glow Gang, Glory Boy's ENT. Blood Money, with the cosign of his cousin Chief Keefe, was flown out and granted studio time by industry conglomerate Interscope Records to gauge his talent and potential to be an artist that will be an asset to their growing roster. Blood Money didn't disappoint. Within a total of 48 hours, across different intervals, he recorded his entire album of 27 songs. Seeing his talent and work ethic, executive Larry Jackson didn't hesitate to sign him as a new artist to Interscope Records for a six-album contract. I'm signed to a six-album deal with Interscope, man. I had to throw this out there, man. I feel like I caught a lick with this one. I'm signed to a six-album deal with Interscope, man. I don't, I don't know nobody signed to that many albums, but. I'm signed to a six album deal with the hottest label out right now, man. Blood Money made it through the struggle, the hardships, the attempts on his life, the shootouts with rivals, doing time behind bars. He survived it all and made it to the point of success doing something he loved since the age of 11 and that didn't bring the danger behind it. What Blood Money was unaware of was that persons were already plotting on his life so he wouldn't see any of the success he just achieved. Approximately two weeks later, Blood Money was back from his time in Los Angeles where he signed his label deal. The intention was to double down and enjoy making a living off music, but his rivals had other plans. On April 9, 2014, the city of Chicago would be shaken to its core by the tragedy that was about to strike. As nighttime approached, Blood Money was having a good time near the area where he grew up at 52nd and Elizabeth Street. He was back visiting family and friends who probably at that moment were just as joyous as he was over the signing of his new record deal. The night lingered on and 9 p.m. came around. Word travels fast and being back in his home neighborhood 
where he had many rivals preying upon his life. Some made use of the opportunity placed before them. While Blood Money was having a grand time, it only took that one moment where his defenses were let down for him to lose his life. At around 9.30 p.m., outside his aunt's home, on the 5600 block of South Elizabeth Street, a man approached and opened fire in the direction of Blood Money. He was struck approximately 10 times with one of the bullets piercing his chest. Around 9.30 last night, relatives say Mario Hess was standing outside of his aunt's home on the 5600 block of South Elizabeth when a man approached and opened fire, hitting Hess at least 10 times. Officers arrived to find Blood Money lying on the sidewalk. His cousin, 28-year-old Darnell Patton, was also injured in the attack, sustaining a bullet wound to his abdomen. Both men were rushed to John H. Stroger Jr. Hospital of Cook County in critical condition. Darrell Patton underwent surgery overnight and survived and was luckily stabilized. Unfortunately, Mario Hess, aka Blood Money, wasn't so fortunate. The wound to his chest was too much for doctors to repair and he succumbed to his injuries. Now this is him, a 30-year-old father of five. He was shot in the chest last night outside of his family's Englewood home. With him was his 28-year-old cousin, Darnell Patton. He was shot in the abdomen and underwent surgery overnight. He is in stable condition here at Strozier. By the time the news of Blood Money's passing spread through the community to his loved ones, many family members spoke out publicly against his passing, stating that it was due to jealousy from persons envious of his rise to fame and lucrative label deal. Blood Money's cousin and manager, Ronaldo Hess, also chimed in, agreeing with sentiments that he became a target because of jealousy. Police say around 9.30 last night, the two were shot in the 5600 block of South Elizabeth Street. Hess was there visiting his family. Friends and family say he just returned from Los Angeles, where he signed a contract with Interscope Records. Hess was recently featured in one of rapper Chief Keef's hit songs. The two were also cousins. A relative says she believes Hess was targeted out of jealousy. Reports state that Blood Money was driving a brand new Cadillac Escalade and it was known he had received a big check, which they estimate to be as much as $100,000 from his record label deal. Family and friends went on to state that even though he had enough money to move away, S, aka Blood Money, wanted to stay close to his roots. Unfortunately, those plotting on his end didn't see the decision as noble as he did. With the deed done, investigators were on the scene and found upwards of a dozen shell casings at the scene of the crime. In fact, the scene was so bullet-ridden, the officers were having a rough time marking off the spread of the casings. Blood Money fell into the trap in the gang culture that has been the premise for many townists to lose their lives. The goal is to make it out, but if you make it out and move away from the neighborhood as you should, then your authenticity is questioned and discredited. So many return to the same neighborhood they wish to be away from due to pride and ego only to be snuffed out in the end. It's a perpetual cycle that continues to take rather than give. Neighbors echo the same reasoning, stating he was representing the hood. The exact words were, he wasn't one of those types where he felt as like he made it and he was too good for us. He wasn't one of those types where he felt like he made it and he was too good for us. He was right here with us still, day before yesterday. That's how he got last night, because he represented his hood. This pushes people to feel like if they don't return to the hood that caused so much pain, loss, and restrictions on their life, that they now fall into a type that's classified as fake or in street lingo, not real. Those close to him felt the pain from his loss, but those that were involved in a feud with the rapper took pleasure in disrespecting his demise, which led to speculation that their affiliate was responsible for Blood Money's hit. One rival by the name of Wooski, in his song, Computer's Remix, would recite the lyrics, I'm leaning off this blood money, I can't even see straight, implying that he was smoking on blood money. Another rival by the name of FYB J. Main, who featured on Wooski's song, Back From The D recited the lyrics, Long live K.I., I'll be sipping blood money, insinuating the same as Wooski. But this time, he associated blood money's hit to an affiliate by the name of K.I. 
This caused confusion as to who they were referring to, as there were two notable people that went by the name K.I. that lived that dangerous lifestyle. The first being Jekyra Barnes, aka the female assassin, and the other being Mob K.I. But given how close Wooski and FYB J. Main were with STLKI, the fingers pointed to her being responsible for Blood Money's hit. Her name became the main suspect gaining credit for the shooting of Blood Money, and soon it would be added to her other list of alleged lives that she took. His cousin, Chief Keith, would respond to all the rumors that were floating around at the time of Blood Money's passing with a subtle and cryptic message. The cops were unable to capture a suspect, but by word of the underworld of the streets, everything seemed to point towards K.I. That became even more supported when she was gunned down just three days after he passed on April 11th, 2014, leading people to speculate that it was retaliation for blood money. But neighbors say Barnes and a friend were walking along the sidewalk when a gunman started firing. When the bullet hit, it was so powerful, she fell on the step. Residents who do not want to be identified say Barnes fought to live but had been shot at least nine times. In the jaw, in the neck, and in the chest, and in the leg. Mm -hmm. Nine times, they say. Barnes was transported to Northwestern. Those speculations held their weight until a past Chicago gang affiliate by the name of Jay Hood got on an interview on April 25th, 2022, and stated two gang members by the name of T. Roy and King Vaughn were the ones responsible for taking Blood Money's life. I ain't out here seeing talking to my ass like you do, bro. Folks, them T Roy and and Vaughn, that nigga. The two were known to be a devious pair among both affiliates and rivals before they both lost their lives to the streets as well. That sparked the trail back around the time Blood Money lost his life, and a tweet was found by King Vaughn just days after he said, "I'm King Vaughn of O Block and I run shit." Many state that this is him hinting to having a hand in taking Blood Money out and asserting his dominance online. Then, his affiliate from O Block also started disrespecting Blood Money's passing, saying that they're sipping on Blood Money, further drawing ties that their comrade King Von and T. Roy, who both were widely associated and respected in O Block, were the ones responsible. King Von would later pen some lyrics that would become part of the song, Evil Twin featuring fellow Chicago native and hip-hop superstar, Lil Durk. The lyrics in question were, and my homie thinking I popped his cousin, well oh well. It's speculated it was directed towards Chief Keith and Blood Money and addressing his name being tied into Blood Money's hit. To this day, no arrests have been made, but everyone that has been rumored to be responsible also lost their lives to the same gun. It's just a repeating cycle that will never stop until those involved in continuing it realize there's no winning at the end of it all. Blood Money's father at his funeral had to live with feeling the guilt for the path his son took with him, being a leading gang member that influenced his son's generation of gangsters. Do something. My son is laying in there now from the product of this environment that we set. So, I, you know, yeah, you can say I blame myself, so. When my, when my kids was coming up, they seen their daddy, and whenever they seen me, they know, you know that I was a strong man back then, but I was a, a, a leader of a gang. I was in the lead. I was a, I was a leader. I was in the stone. According to him, Blood Money also received threats, being connected to his cousin Chief Keith, who at the time also had a lot of rivals in the city. Blood Money's father wanted better for him and his family, to be away from the neighborhood. Instead, he lost his life, leaving five kids behind and a hole in the heart of his loved ones. Oh yeah, well see, that yeah, well I wanted him to move where his family was safe and his kids were safe, cause he was getting little threats and stuff, you know, by him being Chief Keith's cook. Not nothing that he did. His manager was also among those wanting to get blood money away from the city so he could be away from the streets and embrace his new path as an artist. But there just wasn't enough time. Those that were close to him, like his cousin Chief Keith, continues to keep his memory alive. Blood Money was on the verge of leaving his stamp in hip-hop, but his legacy was stolen prematurely. Rest in peace, Blood Money. No, he came from nothing to that. Look at him. He didn't deserve that, though, at all.